The Truck Series is gridded up to turn 40 circuits around this mile-long track before the Elite Cup Series gets on for their second round of the playoffs, but the Truck Series has to turn their first race. Here tonight at Toronto Lakeshore Speedway, this is the Canada 175. Hello again, everybody. I'm Colin Denton with RVN. Welcome to the first race of the NFR and Truck Series playoffs. The Elite Cup guys will be here later tonight to chew up some rubber. The Amateur Cup guys are over at Nashville, but the Truck Series has eight guys competing for a title. That's the most compact playoff grid we have to start off with. Some of them have finished in the top ten in half the races, and in one case, they haven't finished any higher than eighth place this season. That just shows the consistency that some of these guys have to put themselves into this playoff field. Adam Kuhn just barely beat out Benny Seitzer at Texas World, and the playoff pitcher could have looked a lot different if Seitzer had beat him to the line. Kuhn was high enough in points. He could have gotten an open spot if he finished his second, but for Ray and Rowles, their playoff berths were saved by Kuhn getting to the line first. He was not able to do that at Columbia earlier this season, where Barry Watson took home the victory, and he is not in this playoff field. He did not finish top 25 in points, as is required. He's the only driver in this season across all three series not to make that mark so he can go for a good finish but he is not competing for a title tonight or for the rest of the season now we're going to see which of these eight guys could possibly go and advance themselves into the round of six there are a lot more guys in this field that have not won the race so far but you never know one of those eight guys could come home on top Let's take a look at the part-timer races to see how they all fared. Richard Fridge leading the way in the first duel, 38 trucks trying to make the top 10. Immediately off the start, Jonathan Mick, who is on the outside pole of that duel, he is fading way back on that high outside line. Everyone really preferring to go onto that inside groove. Going to be a little contact here between the 97 of Tyler Bate and Ryan Reed in the 66. Reed will slide back up the racetrack, but being in the back of the field, they're not going to throw a caution. They will keep on racing. But as Reed continues to go on the track, Luke Evans getting held up a little bit with that 66 running a little bit slow with that contact on the inside wall, giving him a little damage and making his truck a little slow where he finally cuts inside, tries to get some of that possession back. A tight battle for that last transfer spot. Richard Roffey, Brett Graham, Keyshawn Richardson, Carson Clevenger. We'd end up seeing Aiden Valdez in that 04 truck start to slide backward on that outside line. You can see he goes on the high outside at three wide. He will lose a lot of spots and end up losing a chance at making the final field. Richard Fridge will make it to the finish line first, followed by Justin Zidell, Tanya Breyer, Luke Evans, Louis Usher, Nick Rail, Tristan Nudet, Richard Roffey, Keyshawn Richardson, and Carson Clemenger. Ten drivers moving on to the next heat. We go to the next duel. Gatlin Downey leading the way. Brandon Figueroa, he's trapped on that outside line, but unlike Mick, he's able to get down to the inside, get himself a little clear, and did not lose quite as many spots. He'll remain in the hunt. We see here a battle for second place. Carson Mitchell moving to the inside of Jack Kitchell, moving him up the racetrack and moving him back through the field. Here's another battle going into turn three. Tyler Sage moving to the inside of Christian Vargas. Trying to see if he can do to move himself up. Leland Fife following just behind. It's going to end up being Gatlin Downey getting to the start finish line first, followed by Carson Mitchell, Jordan Probst, Donnie Williams, John Campbell, Juan Garcia, Brandon Figueroa, Will Stukes, and Tyler Sage, and Christian Vargas will just barely hang on for that 10th spot. So the 10 drivers in both of those duels move on to our final event, trying to see who will be the six that make it into the main feature. Richard Fritch starting on the inside, going to have the advantage early, but he's going to be moved out of the way by Justin Zidell. Both of these drivers trying to make their second start in the series, and Fritch continues to fall back. The 99 truck underneath them, Nick Rail, trying to move upward, and so is Gatlin Downey, who started on the outside front row, but he has not been able to hold that position. Luke Evans... The driver leading the way in the part-time point standings. Able to get by Justin Zidell. He's going to make it to the finish line first. And he will bring the other 19 drivers in the field to the start finish line in single file. Let's take a look at the other drivers that make it in. Louis Usher, Carson Clevenger, Justin Zidell, Nick Rail, and Richard Roffey are all going to qualify for the event. Everyone, with the exception of Evans, making their first start in the series. Gatlin Downey and Juan Garcia, the first two that are just outside of making it into the top ten. Both of them still looking for their first starts. We see the back half of the field here. Several names of drivers that have already qualified for an event this season. Mitchell, Ludet, Richardson, Brayer, Fridge. They are all going to be on the outside looking in. Adam Kuhn will be our hot seat driver for this race. He has three top tens in the past three races, including that victory at Texas World. We'll have his helmet on board 
for the entirety of this race. Let's take a quick look at our chase standings heading into this one. Six different winners are going to have a three-point advantage over our non-winners, Steve Ray and Jasper Rowles, heading into this event. Definitely going to see if those two drivers that have been very consistent this season but haven't been able to come up on the top step of the podium are able to take advantage of their momentum to power by some of these guys that have the victories but haven't necessarily shown all the pieces coming together. This could be a big opportunity for them to get some points and start to work their way up in the standings and move on to the next round. That is going to do it for our pre-race coverage. Let's send it down trackside to get the starting command for tonight's race. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, here to give the command to start engines for today's race, please welcome your Grand Marshal, Director of Admissions at the University of Northwestern Ohio, Don Loden. Drivers, start your engines! Forty-two drivers set up to look for victory, eight of them looking to get into the next round. Let's take a look at the full starting grid for tonight's race. Starting at the front, Jesse McConaughey, the first driver outside the playoff cut line. He'll look for his first victory in this series in the 62 Sapoji Chevrolet. On his outside, Canadian driver Carter Friesen looking for his first top 10 since Twin Ring. He'll start second in the 92 Light Post Digital Silverado. Lined up behind them, Derek Anderlein, the runner-up at Pikes Peak, which might be the most similarly distanced to this racetrack, and Barry Watson, the lone driver to miss the playoffs after getting a victory. On row three, James Smith, the borderline playoff contender all season, but fell late, and Taylor the Pig got his first top 10 at Texas World. In row four, we have Billy Thompson, who finished outside the top 34 times this season, looking for a good finish tonight, and Adam Kuhn, our most recent winner from Texas World, and our first playoff contender in the grid. Starting place number nine, Trevor Nix, last in full-time points this season, three top 30s to his name. Tyler Reed, another playoff contender, and the Zen Joltis winner. In row six, we have two drivers who got their best finishes at Twin Ring, Robbie Bell, who got seventh, and Recency, who got third. In the 13th spot, we've got Hunter Cox, who got his second top 10 of the season at Texas World, and Benny Seitzer, who came up one spot short of a playoff bid, finishing runner-up at Texas World. Stephen Carmona starts place number 15, just two spots better than his best finish on the season. Emerson Sims, to his outside, has a best finish of 19th at Trenton. Back in row 9, we have Jason Langley, whose back-to-back -back top 5s are his only top 20s on the season. Luke Evans, the lone part-time winner, making his third start in a row. In row 10, Jasper Rawls, an open playoff contender who has a best finish of 8th this season, and Louis Usher, the highest qualifying of our five first-time starters. In row 11, three straight finishes of 35th or worse for Keith Young. He'll try to break that streak today, and Essentia has two top 20s in a row. Starting 23rd, Justin Lizenby, who has no top 20s in the past five races. Kevin Knight, three straight finishes of 30th or worse after starting the season with three top 20s. In row 13, Josh McCoy, four top 10s on the season, still trying to crack a top five, and Steve Ray, our other open playoff contender. In row 14, we have Carson Clevenger making his first start in his fifth attempt, and Mike Simpson, two top 10s in a row for the one seed in the playoffs. In row 15, Dylan Lexton, two top fives at the Super Speedways, Clint McComb, one of our playoff contenders, three top fives at the Intermediates, and Short Tracks, which might be a little better suited for Toronto Lakeshore. In row 16, Jim Fowler, a best finish of 12th besides his victory, trying to see if he can crack another top 10. Daniel Voyles, three top 10s over the past four races. Roger Ray got a season best third at Texas World. He starts inside row 17 to his outside as Nick Rail, the most veteran among the first time starters, been attempting since race number two. Another first time starter behind him, Richard Roffey. On his outside, Ryan Parr seen six top 20s, including four in a row. Ross Kispin starts row 19 off, three top 10s this season for him. Dalton Wise, a playoff contender, the last in the field, finished no lower than 31st this season. In row 20, Aaron Dumati is going to have to come deep in the field to seek out his first top 10, Justin Zidell, his first race in six attempts. And deep in the field, Moses Osborne got a top 10 at Oswego, and Andy Quinn has only peaked at 10th place this season at Twin Ring. Plenty of drivers seeking out a victory here tonight at our first mile-long track, including our eight playoff drivers. Their NFRN X in-car streams are now live. You can go check out the NFRN X channel. Find your favorite driver, follow along with them as they go for a victory here tonight at Toronto Lakeshore. Pace truck pulls off. 42 trucks on the front stretch. Green flag flies for the first playoff race of the NFRN Truck Series. Jesse McConaughey gets the great start. Carter Friesen caught napping, and he is falling back on that outside line. 
Gonna try to squeeze into that inside line, which is way more preferred on this racetrack, but right now he's stuck out there. Now it looks like he gets down there. But Makana still out in front. Andrew Line and Smith in tow, along with Billy Thompson and Trevor Nix. Further back in the field, though, they are still spread out two wide, even three wide, and Tyler Reed is on the high outside. And that is not good for him. He's gonna see a lot of trucks go to his inside. After starting in the 10th spot, he is dropping back like a rock. Look at all those trucks going underneath him. He still can't get down, even to the middle groove. Got another truck up there in the gray with him. That's Emerson Sims. As they are going to fall back fast. Jasper Rowles trying to start to chase down the front part of the group. He is just outside the top 10. Adam Kuhn just in front of him. Those two now leading the playoff standings three laps in. We'll see that ticker on the right side constantly updating as the positions go by and now we have James Smith jumped to the inside of Derek Anderline for second place and Billy Thompson looking for a run there and he's going to get to the inside a tough break for Smith at Texas World he had an opportunity at a playoff spot and he kind of squandered it late unfortunately had a spin onto pit lane that kind of cost him there got him a little damage and now he's on the high side of three wide it's Anderline and Robbie Bell go underneath him and he's going to lose a lot more spots so a move that isn't going to work out for him. Jess McConaughey out front still, and he is the only driver to complete every lap so far this season, and that goes for all three of our series. That is an impressive feat no matter how many races it is. But this far in to the season, still getting every lead lap finish, that's a great run for him. Here comes Adam Cooney. He's making some moves to the inside, getting to the inside of Carmona, got to the inside of Smith as well as Andrew Line, who's now on the high outside, and Looks like he's now out of three wide situation. Kuhn getting into the front of that pack and going to try to chase down the next group. Meanwhile, here's Steve Ray all the way at the back of the field. This is a bad start to his race, and we see Tyler Reed a few spots ahead of him. He finally found his way to the inside, and it's going to start to try to make up some positions as we see one truck on the high outside. That's recency. Here comes Barry Watson now. He's trying to make up his spots, and this has just been a disastrous season for him. After getting the win at Columbia, his best finish over the past six races, 27th position. And right now he runs ahead of that, trying to make up some more spots, goes to the inside of Carmona. But a real heartbreak for that driver, had a win and couldn't get into the playoffs. Seven laps in the books here at Toronto Lakeshore. Break and we'll be right back. People have said my success last year is because I moved back into the house I grew up in. But it's more than that. Before the first Michigan race, I replaced a door handle. I finished second. Then, a couple days before Sonoma, I painted the entire living room. I won. New hardwood floors, took the 400 at Daytona. It was obvious. The key to winning races, home improvement. Want to be a part of the NFRN? You have your opportunity to join this series for the final five races of the season before we hit season three. Link down in the description. Deadline to start attempting at race number 11 will be in two days. Just a reminder, you don't have to sign up multiple times. This one will get you into those final five races. And also, if you are a full-time driver, you are not allowed to enter into the part-time entries. Just saw a look at Adam Kuhn, and just behind him is Jasper Rawls trying to go and catch up to Kuhn as they run one, two among the playoff drivers. Rouse comes in as the eighth seed, and that's exactly where his best finish is. Eighth place this season. He hasn't had the best finishes, but he has been consistent, and that's been able to get him into these playoffs. He currently runs one position better than his best finish. Let's cycle through our playoff drivers while we're at it. Jim Fowler is just a few spots behind. He is 17 points above the cut line. And unfortunately for him, his only top 10 finish so far this season has come on the dirt. That was his victory at Oswego. But he hasn't finished very well on the pavement. 12th place finish for him. That came at Zen Joltis, the super speedway. Go back to Trenton, a place that he was leading at. He finished 14th there. That was his best intermediate finish. Here's Mike Simpson. He's the next driver down. And he is just kind of hanging there in that bubble line. He is right next to Clint McComb, Dalton Wise, Tyler Reed. Fortunately for him, he's on the green side of that, but he's going to have to start making up some positions. And it seems like now that everyone's calmed down, we're kind of single file. It seems like drivers are having some troubles making up ground. You see there, there is a pass way up there in the distance, or at least someone is on the high side. But now that everyone's kind of strung out, it's kind of turned into a freight train. And we kind of saw that coming in the part-time races. 
now it's kind of a matter of who can get the best track position, who can take advantage of that one pit stop we're expecting to see. Dalton Wise, he's seen his worst finishes of the season come in these past two races. 31st position, now runs 29th. Kind of on the decline since he got his win at Trenton. Took advantage of Jim Fowler's errors. A few spots behind him, we see Tyler Reed, who started up in the 10th position, but that outside line absolutely killed him, and he got blown right by by most of the field, and now finds himself below the cut line. Started his season off with two top 10s before getting that win at Zen Joltis, but right now, it just doesn't look like the finishes are there for him, and this run right now is kind of showing it. And here comes Steve Ray, who is just a spot behind Tyler Reed. Now, reason for that gap is because Reed had the advantage of three bonus points for getting the victory. Ray did not have that win to fall back on, so he's got a few more points to make up, and considering he was last at one point in this race, He's really going to have to make up positions, and it's going to have to come on pit lane because it looks like passing is a luxury here at this racetrack. Closing in on halfway and pit stops, we'll take another quick break to take you to the end of this race here at Toronto Lakeshore. Chase Elliott, Xfinity Series champ. One word, merchandising. The Chase Elliott seat cover with massaging beard action. Your face is giving the massage. Are you serious? The Chase Elliott dipstick. You know you're big time when you got your own dipstick. Jumper cables. Tire gauge. Psst, 32 pounds. Chase Elliott garden gnome. Gnomes are magic. The Chase Elliott action figure. That's a blow up doll. Blow up doll action figure. Makana has led this way from the start. Robbie Bell and Hunter Cox following just behind, followed by Billy Thompson, and that's the group of four that's out in front. Trevor Nix a little bit further behind. And as a matter of fact, as we finish up that lap, he's been passed by Adam Kuhn, but this is a great run for Nix, who finds himself deep in the standings. Five finishes of 37 for worse this season, and he's up here in the top 10, putting up a solid performance. He's gonna have to close it out, but right now looking very strong heading into this back half of the race. Just hit lap 21, and here we go, a pass for the lead. Robbie Bell diving to the inside, to Jesse McCona, and he's gonna have it clear. Thompson cannot take advantage at the same time, and McCona's gonna be able to get back into that inside line. Now Hunter Cox has the disadvantage. Thompson's gonna go underneath him, and maybe Adam Kuhn slides in here for fourth place. But a move made for the lead, and McCona now runs second. Looking a little deeper in our field. Let's take a look at Carson Clevenger running that 82 machine. And he is just outside the top 10, but not bad for a first-time starter. And we have five of those in this field today. Luke Evans, the lone exception. Here we go. Pass for the inside. Adam Kuhn and Jasper Rawls take advantage of the 76 p.m. on the outside line. And he is going to drop back really far. And here comes Makana once again. A battle to the inside. And just like that, the 62 will take the lead back. We said passing was a luxury. Well, it's starting to happen once again. And they are putting up a big fight at the front of the field. A couple of non-playoff drivers. We mentioned Justin McCona. He was the driver that was just outside the cut line. And we see here Carmona now fading back as he was on the outside of three wide. But McCona just outside of getting that final open spot that Jasper Rawls took. This will be a big run for Makana. Little bit of sweet not being in the playoffs, but a win is a win, and you'll take him where you can get him. We see here Benny Seitzer, who finished second place at Texas World. He could have gotten the spot that Adam Kuhn ended up taking, even though Kuhn had a high probability of making it even on points. But Seitzer now find, finds himself deep in this field, so even if he had gotten in, he'd be well in the deep end as he slides to the back of the field. We see here now Billy Thompson moving to the inside of Robbie Bell, going for second place. And if they stay side by side, this is going to be big for Kuhn and Rawls trying to go for spots. And here we go. On board of Adam Kuhn as he goes to the inside trying to take a spot on the 27. The playoff drivers are loving these non-playoff drivers battling for position as they try to go for a victory to lock themselves into the round of six. 19 truck staying right against that orange line on the bottom. And now we see here Jim Fowler starting to fade back a little bit. Here comes Dalton Wise trying to take the spot on him and start sending him backwards. Fowler finds himself just five points ahead of the cut line. Wise was four, but now makes the pass on him. 
Clint McComb and Tyler Reed just two points separating them. But you can see the eight car in the background along with the 12 car. Oh, and here's another situation here as Mike Simpson is going to try to take advantage of Justin Zydell up at the, at the high side. And there's a lot of side-by-side -side racing all of a sudden. We see here a list of the drivers making their first career starts. And so far, not too glamorous for some of them. Louis Usher back in 40th, Nick Rail 39th, Rif Richard Roffey 37th. Zydell currently 22nd, but that might change as he slides back. And Carson Clevenger still having that solid run. We'll see if it holds up. Jasper Rawls was not able to get by Robbie Bell as now there's a separation between him and Kuhn. Trying to see what he can do to get around that 27 and keep himself in contention with the 19 truck, but honestly, all these guys have been running pretty similar lap times, so it's not like the advantage is there. He's just really going to have to muscle his way through there or keep it clean because we are just about 10 laps to go to the end of this race, and here comes Carmona. He's the only driver going to pit right here. He was near the rear of the field, but here we go. Now we're going to see a lot of the leaders start to come down for their pit stops. We are expecting them to come down one time this race, and here it comes. So McConnell's is going to come down. Thompson's going to stay out, get a bonus point. And we see also the 19 and the 01 will come down on this stop. It looks like a lot of takers among the playoff drivers on this first set, but there are a few defectors. Rouse will see his pit box first. They jack up the right side of the car. They're going for right side tires at least, but I don't see them moving their tires around. They're going to go with just right sides only, and that might be the strategy across the board. Two tires only for the O1 one truck. Oh, he's going to have to watch out for that 69 coming in. Adam Kuhn sitting there trying to get his tank full of fuel. He's a little slow. He finally pulls away, but it looks like he lost a couple positions trying to make sure that he had enough to go to the end. Don't know how much fuel you really needed to pack into it unless he had some damage he had to repair. Because you are so close to the end of this race, you don't need that much fuel. Here comes Tyler Reed. He was one of those defectors that stayed out there for an extra lap. We also saw Billy Thompson come down, and that's going to bring the rest of the field down. And Dalton Wise pulling away. We just saw Makana go by. There's Rowles. Why is creeping up pit lane as he tries to get to the end, but here comes the 62. He's coming around, and it looks like he's going to take the outright lead. I believe that was Thompson we just saw go by right there. And the 69, I believe, is going to go a lap down. So right here, Makana has taken back over advantage of this field, and he is pulling away by a wide margin. There is the 27. He's able to get by Billy Thompson, and then there's Makana way up there in the 69 truck now kind of in the middle of both of them. So as they cycle out, Jasper Rawls finds himself in fourth place, the highest up among the playoff drivers. Adam Kuhn has dropped to eighth place. And actually, it appears that the first-time starter, Carson Clevenger, has gotten by him, so he looks like he's dropped back to ninth. And meanwhile, we see Mike Simpson here trying to battle through the 90 truck. And yeah, we see Kuhn has dropped back to ninth place now, so a great run by the 82 driver, but Kuhn starting to fade back a couple spots, and obviously to a couple of these other guys further back where Kuhn is running. They would love to be where they are right now, but at the moment we have a tie at the cut line and it is Clint McComb and Steve Ray just rode on board Jim Fowler who is nine points ahead but looking for positions not a lot in front of him while Justin McConnor is just kind of coasting at this point. Bell unable to really catch up to him. Everyone pitting at the same time basically taking all the same amount of tires. Really nothing strategically that they can gain at that. Meanwhile, just noticing that Jasper Oz has gotten up third place as he and Lizenby were able to get by Thompson, who now finds himself back in fifth spot. So a good game by the 0-1 team as they try to move forward. And here's Barry Watson. He's putting up a top 10 performance. And what a poor time for it to come for him. I mean, obviously he wants to get back into a good running position, but... If that could have come several weeks before this one, that would have been great for that team, just to give him a little bit of momentum boost. Unfortunately, though, he found himself outside the top 25 in standings and is unable to compete for a championship this season. We'll see what his future holds. But right now, just going for those good finishes, and he's being pressured from behind by Clevenger. We'll see if he's able to hold him off. Up here with Makana. Continuing to hold the lead. Got the lapped car of recency behind him. Here comes... Justin Lisenby, he's making a move to the inside of Jasper Rawls for third place. So Rawls will drop back one spot. 
We'll try to duck back in the line. Make sure that Thompson doesn't close in and try to get back around the 31 truck while Bell kind of lingers up there. Here comes Cooney. He's trying to make moves to the inside of Watson. It looks like Clevenger has gotten by for 7th place. Two laps to go, and Kuhn seeing if he can get one more spot, try to close that gap just a little bit more on Rowles to hold the top spot in the standings. But right now it's all the 62 truck out in front. Lost the lead a little bit earlier on, just before the pit stops, but got it back as he hits the white flag lap. Started the season off with a fourth place run at Columbia. Got a runner up at our lone road course at Mayville. A few top 20 sprinkled in there, but has not seen a ton of success at the intermediate ovals. But despite a lapped truck at his back and not making the playoffs, he is still going to have a good night tonight with his team, claiming a victory here tonight at Toronto Lakeshore. Makana grabs the win. Jasper Rowell is going to be our first playoff driver in the fourth spot. Adam Kuhn stays in ninth. But it's the 62 truck that's going to victory lane up here in Toronto. So we'll take a look at our final finishing results with the 62 up top. Robbie Bell coming home in the second position. That's his best finish of the season. After getting a seventh place previously, Justin Lewis be behind. And Jasper Rawls, our first playoff driver on the list, followed by Adam Kuhn down in ninth place. Also got to give a shout out to Carson Clevenger, a great run in his debut. Seventh place for him and Rory Watson gets the top 10. Would have been a lot more special if he had been in the playoffs. Mike Simpson, the next playoff driver in the results. A team spot for him. A little bit further back from those top two guys, but at least he has several competitors behind him. Steven Carmona pulls it back to 17th spot after drifting to the rear of the field. He was the first one to take a pit stop, and it looks like that early strategy held him out. Stayed away from the traffic. Also, some notable runs for those first-time guys, Justin Zidell and Nick Rail, getting some top 20 finishes. Our next two playoff drivers, just outside the top 20, Tyler Reed and Jim Fowler. Still above the playoff cut line, Tyler Reed pulls it back to a manageable finish after drifting back after starting 10th place. Got sucked way out in the deep end and could not pull it all the way back. James Smith and Derek Enwine, a little bit surprising to see them so far back after they were running very decently at the start of the race. Also for Carter Friesen, the outside pole sitter all the way back in 28th. And Luke Evans, the part-time point leader, he is not having a great run here and he is going to end up in the 27th spot. Didn't talk about him all day. And we move back here to the final dozen positions where you'll find three playoff competitors. Steve Ray, 31st, McComb, 33rd, Wise, 37th. Very bad runs for them. And Ray is still not above the cut line because McComb has three bonus points to fall back on. So at the moment, he's going to have to battle out the A-Truck to see if he can get out in front. It's going to take another couple of races to see who will be the two drivers outside the cut line. Take a look at our final positions. And recency is the only driver to go down a lap in our 40 lap event. Now let's take a look at how those chase standings look and obviously they won't look too different from how they finished today. Although as we just mentioned, McComb does have those three bonus points from the race win that keeps him in front of Ray for the time being, but it is still a close battle there and no one is really safe at the moment. Jasper Rawls and Adam Kuhn have given themselves a pretty comfortable cushion, but you never know what's gonna happen next race or the one after that that could keep them out of contention. Sneaking a peek at some of those drivers that did not qualify for the playoffs. Would you believe that the driver that came in ninth and won the race is going to stay out on top and he extends the points lead, if you want to call it that, among those that did not qualify for the playoffs. It's kind of a battle to see who will get ninth spot. Some solid runs by both the Western Motorsports drivers, Ryan Parsons and Josh McCoy, finishing inside the top dozen will keep them up there in contention. The runner-up finish for Robbie Bell will help him jump up five positions, going from 26th to 21st. And you also see... The top 10 run that Barry Watson got him, put him inside the top 25. Unfortunately, just came one race too late. And in the bottom part of these full-timer standings, Justin Lisenby's top five day is able to pull him away from third to last place in standings, while Trevor Nix is able to get out of the full-on last spot. Meanwhile, Luke Evans, the only part-timer in the field that wasn't a first-time starter, obviously that position helps him extend his points lead, albeit not by much and he still remains one point ahead of Emerson Sims, who is last place in full-timer standings. A quick look at our team standings, which are not reset by playoffs, and Western Motorsports' two drivers are putting up some solid performances that are keeping them at the front of this field. Gardner Racing with Roger Ray is just behind by 11.5 points. Thunderhawk Motorsports with James Smith, just a little bit behind them. 
And a look at our 14 drivers trying to compete to get into the Amateur Cup event at Nashville, obviously containing our eight playoff drivers, as well as the next six in standings. Among the drivers on this list, Ross Kispin is the only driver that hasn't made a start in the Amateur Cup Series, although he has made three attempts. Although Moses Osborne hasn't made a start since Columbia, so he's certainly gunning for one, although they'll be starting deep in the field. An exciting and intense battle here tonight at Toronto Lakeshore. We go caution-free for the full 40-lap tenure. The playoff drivers try to put up their best, but at the end it was a non-playoff driver that comes home with the victory, and it was the one that happens to be at the top of those drivers that just missed out on getting into the eight-person chase. Our next Truck Series event will be taking place at Derek's Motodrome, a standalone event. We will also have Amateur Cup Series racing at Nashville coming up along with the Elite Cup Series here at Toronto Lakeshore. For NFRN and RVN, my name is Colin Denton. We will see you all for our next races.